Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talking Tennis with John Foster. Got uh, a new little lineup for you today. I'm going to talk about three different stories, and then I'm going to give you a tennis tip. I have a practice tip for you and a quote of the day or a quote for the week till we see you next week. It's U.S. Open time, and I hope everybody's watching the U.S. Open. Just starting today and looking forward to seeing Federer and Nadal hopefully battle it out in finals. We'll see what happens. All right, so we'll get into a little story first. Talking about a good friend of mine. Well, I haven't seen him in years, so I don't know how good a friend he is. But a guy, let's say something. Before I introduce you to him, let me tell you a little something what he did. Uh, he was number one in the world in the 12s. He was number one in the world in the 14s, 16s, 18s. He achieved the highest ranking of number four in the world. Now, this is back in the 70s, okay? Uh, four in the world in doubles. Um, played all the Grand Slams. Got to 32 in the world in singles. Um, that's not even the best thing he did. Four in the world in doubles. Uh, 32 in the world in singles. Guess who, number one in the, guess who number two in the world was in the 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s? John McEnroe. John McEnroe. That's the phenomenal thing. In fact, I would talk with Van Winitsky's father, and Mr. Winitsky was telling me one day out at Inverary in Fort Lauderdale, in Florida, I wish, you know, McEnroe's dad's telling Mr. Winitsky, I, I wish my son could be more like your son, you know? So anyway, all that stuff you saw McEnroe do on the tennis court, we're going to get into another story later about this. Guess who taught Mr. McEnroe all that? A lot now a lot of it's planned you know it throws the other person off I don't know if you know that but I mean he does have a bad temper but a lot of times it's stalling tactics and it's uh, it's a little gamesmanship okay just for the record all right I want to get into a tennis tip now so tennis tip uh, strategy match strategy a lot of kids that I work with they don't have a strategy going into a match you should always have a strategy going into a tennis match let me give you an, what I usually do is even though I teach a lot of offense I believe in offense 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 and more offense okay but uh, match strategy you, you you should have consistency first let's start with that maybe especially in the juniors you go out there maybe he has the wrong racket today maybe he has the wrong uh, put on the wrong shoes you know his dog got ran over you know He's not, he doesn't feel like competing being there. Usually that doesn't happen with the guys. The guys, the boys are pretty good about competing. A girl, if you're a girl player, go out there and compete every day. And I learned this through another girl player that was very good, one of the top players in the state of Texas, um, top 10. And uh, she said, girls quit. You know, the wind blows left and they quit. So for the girls, that could happen a whole lot. And when they do that, I just recommend that you take them out that day. Learn to, learn to win. When somebody's going to give up, take the match okay so strategy the first strategy you should have i would recommend consistency you want to you know, 20 ball drill i call it you want to just put 20 balls back to them see if they have the right racket maybe they can't hit the third ball back in the court because of their their racket's no good or they got a hole in their shoes and they don't like running around so much anyway so consistency first then you do your pattern play whatever it is you you know you you like to use patterns move the person around you start going for more angles Start using a little more power and not just being consistent. You're actually pressing them a little bit. That's game plan number two. Game plan number three. That's not working. What do you do? Well, okay, now you're going to go into the net maybe. You go into the net, come, and then you also bring them. I call the net something that you need to do. You need to bring them into the net, and then you also need to take, you know, uh, you need to go to the net. All my students know how to volley. I teach it from day one. I was a volleyer. I, could, I played a whole match one time. We'll talk about that story another day where I didn't hit a single ground stroke. I chipped. You don't know what a chip is. It's when the person serves and you just kind of volley it, you chip it. It's not really a slice. It's not a long, but I chip it and I run right in behind it and go to the net. I'm putting pressure on the person. I used to like to put pressure. And besides, I didn't like to play long points. I'd rather hit it, finish, hit it, finish. That's my personality. That's another story for another. Playing to your personality. If, you, if you're like me, I had the patience of a fly. I can't sit there and rally the ball 20, 30 times. If I did that, I'd hate tennis. I like to hit, hit, finish, hit, finish. And then I enjoy playing tennis. I've lost matches that I enjoy playing. 
All right, so now we're going to get into a practice habit. Practice habit. A good practice habit, if you hit it, you need to make it. This is what I tell the kids when they're out there playing. If you can reach the ball and you hit it, you, you need to expect to make it. I see kids get to the ball and they just hit it and they don't have no intention of making it. Or they get to it and they hit it and they just put it back in the court where they can't win the point. Don't do that. If you get to the ball, you hit the ball, not only do you, I want you to hit it, but you got to make it. And I'd suggest, I'd recommend <laughs> that you hit it to the spot that's going to possibly win the point, not just back in the middle of the court. You get what you practice. If you practice just hitting it back in the middle of the court, you're not practicing to beat good players. I never train players to beat bad players. I always train them to play world-class players, okay? So I'm always training somebody to play world-class tennis. It's just how I'm... I'm geared up, you know. I don't, I don't accept anything less, and you shouldn't either. So if you get to the ball, you need to know what to do with it. You should know your options, and you try to do that with the ball. Even, even if you can't do it, you got to know what you're doing and be trying to do that, okay? If you hit it, you make it. All right, you ready for this? Story number three. Oh, what it takes to win sometimes. Mr. Winnesey, this is thanks to Van. I hope I see Van one day soon. Be good to retouch with this guy. Uh, Mr. W Mr. Winitsky, he, uh, later on, he got nerve damage, by the way, and he couldn't play anymore. He was a lefty and uh, nerve damage, and I don't even think he made a million dollars on the tour. Back in the 70s, there was no money on the tour, everybody. If you watch matches from the 70s, you'll notice there's no, um, there's no advertising. There's no money. He made like a quarter of a million dollars. He had to teach tennis. In fact, he had to work for Ivan Lendl. So anyhow, Van one day, he's playing a match at his old club. His mom's the pro down in Florida in uh, Inverary. And uh, it's a men's open match. Now, he's got to be in his 40s, early 40s, but he can still school most college players. He got his arm back, but I mean, he couldn't play on the pro tour. And so anyhow, so he goes to play this match against a college kid. And uh, I didn't see him until after the match. He comes and says, well, how do you, I won. So he tells me what he did. Well, he knows that he has 15 minutes prior to getting to a match. So what he does is he showed up at 14 minutes till the time of his match. Okay? So he walks in. He knows the exact time. The guy, he wants him default because he knows. You ever seen McEnroe? This guy's worse. Okay? <laughs> he doesn't want to play Van. Van will play every head game in the world with him. Okay? Besides try to hit him with the ball a few times, like he tried to do me, but he never got me. Hmm. That's why he asked me to play the U.S. Open doubles with him one time, so that's another story. So anyhow, Van uh, shows up 14 minutes. He's got to play this. He's got to play the match. No, I want him defaulting. He can't do that. You got to default this guy. No, 14 minutes, dude. Let's go. We got to go on the court. There's no game. So the guy's pissed off that he has going to that he's got to play this guy now. You know, Van, he knows Van's going to mad. Van's already made him mad. Guess what the score is? 6-0, 6-0. So Van, so anyhow, Van tells me, yeah, I pissed, I had to make him mad. Why? Well, if I don't make him mad, it'd probably beat me. <laughs> the secret to winning that match was making the guy mad. The guy can't play when he's mad. That's how you win the match. Everybody thinks that it's hitting tennis balls. It's not. Everybody thinks I'm, I've created great players because I teach great strokes. I do. But there's a lot of other people out there with great strokes. And there's people with worse strokes. Look at Brad Gilbert. Made $4 million on the Pro Tour and he, everybody knew he couldn't hit a tennis ball. Well, he said he could hit it, but it wasn't as good as everybody else. But he was smart. Winning ugly. They would have named it Winning Smart, but it doesn't sell books. Brad Gilbert. I'm the second Brad Gilbert. Okay, I think just like this guy. Um, very brilliant man. So anyhow, strokes, it's not strokes, it's strategy. You got to know how, and it's, and when you're playing a match, in a match with somebody, it's reading their mind. I used to do a lot of serving volley. You got to anticipate, you got, people have MO. You know what an MO, an MO is mode of operation. So when you're playing somebody, you got to know, and sometimes I knew everything they did. It was like reading a book playing this guy today. I'm going in and it's over there, I'm waiting on it. Just, just totally messing with them. That's fun. That's how it should be. It's a chess match. I'll get into that later. All right, we're going to finish this up. Quote of the day. Okay, every, every week we're going to do a quote. I got a quote for you. Okay, this is something that my dad gave me, and I would recommend that, that everybody read this. There's other things to read, but gave me a book called uh, You Can If You Think You Can by Norman Vincent Pale. 
and it was the secret to a lot of my success uh, on the tennis court or anything I've done in life. So you can if you think you can. It's more important what you think you can do and what you think you can't do. It's important too because you can't do it if you can't think it. You have to have the idea, then you have to have the word, and then you, you got to go do it, and then you can have creation. And it's done like that. See you next week. John Foster, Talking Tennis with John Foster. 